uh, yeah the uh, sixth chapter which is uh, which is rotational motion right system of particles so that i will talk about in the class because that will not take that so in that chapter we have we have only talked about center of mass and all those other things right so those questions uh, will not take that much of a time. Oh, who joined us? Nabil has joined. Yeah. So let us uh, start and uh, let us do some of the questions that we were doing in this uh, month. So, yeah, what was uh, the chapter that uh, we were uh, discussing? This thing. Okay, so in the last class, uh, we were about to do this uh, problem. So this thing we were uh, talking about, right? And uh, the idea that we have to use is uh, that we have to, uh, right? So let's let's do this uh, problem. So we have uh, this question, and uh, let's do this uh, problem. Okay, so this is uh, the question, and uh, it is talking about uh, the kinetic energy in the at some point, right? So the object is dropped, right? So a particle is re released uh, from height s. So let's say this is uh, the height. It is released from here, and this is uh, the surface, right? So this is uh, S height, and it is released from here. And uh, at a certain height, it's kinetic energy, let's say at uh, this height, right? So at this height, the kinetic energy is uh, three times its uh, potential energy, right? So the kinetic energy is three times its uh, potential energy. So let's say this is uh, H, and at this point, the kinetic energy is, uh, let's say we are talking about second point. This is three times the potential uh, energy, right? Now, uh, the height from the surface of uh, the Earth and uh, the speed of the particle at that are respective, right? And the speed of the particle. So, we have to, in this question, we have to find out what is uh, the height from this Earth. So, this is uh, the Earth. Right, and this is uh, the surface. This is some height from the Earth's surface that uh, the object is released. It is uh, downwards, and it is uh, going. It is dropping down. And uh, at this point, we have to find out what is uh, this height. Right. So let's say this is. Uh, let's say this is uh, h. So we have to find out uh, this h. And this would be how much? This would be S minus uh, H, right? So we have to find out what is this H, and we have to find out what is the velocity at uh, this point. These are the two things that we have to calculate. So what is the idea that we will apply in here? Can you guys uh, tell? We have already learned the concept. So what is the, what is the idea that we are going to apply in here? Can you guys tell me? Yes. Okay, so the idea is uh, conservation of mechanical energy, right? This is the idea that we have to apply. Conservation of energy we have to apply. So whatever the energy at uh, this point, right? Let's say E. This would be in here also E. This is the total energy, right? In here, that would also be E, total energy, and uh, in here, that would also be E. So this is uh, the question, right? What is, let's say this is uh, point 1, this is point uh, 2, this is point uh, 3. So we know that uh, what is the energy which is there at this point? What is the only energy that is there? Yes. Yes, uh, what is the only energy that is there at this point, at one? 
at one you have only because the particle is starting from rest so it has only the potential energy so e is kinetic energy one plus uh, potential energy one in here kinetic energy is zero potential energy is uh, the height is s so this is m g and s right and we are going uh, we are measuring from this reference so whenever we are going uh, above then the, the potential energy is positive whenever we are going down so then potential energy is negative. so in here the potential energy is simply s uh, mgs so this would be simply mgs this is the first thing now at uh, this point right at second point at uh, second point, uh, we have uh, total energy. This is kinetic energy 2 plus potential energy 2, right? So we know that uh, this kinetic energy is 3 times potential energy, right? And this is uh, 2 plus this is uh, PE2. This thing we already know, right? This is given from uh, the question. So this is uh, four times P E two, right? Now we know that total energy is how much? Total energy is m g s from one. Potential energy at uh, this point. So this height is h. So this is four. This height is m g h. So m g m g cancels and uh, h is s by four. So that is uh, the answer, right? Is it uh, clear? So we have uh, two options which say that uh, you have S by 4, S by 4, so A and uh, D. Now we have to find out uh, what is the velocity. So to calculate the velocity, we get the idea that uh, this is uh, given, right? So kinetic energy at uh, 2 that is uh, that is 3 times potential energy at 2 so kinetic energy is half m p square and this is 3 and uh, m g h h we have just uh, calculated s by 4 right so m and uh, m cancel 2 and uh, 4 cancel and uh, v square is uh, 3 g s by 2 so v is top 3 g s by 2 so this would be the answer 3 g s by 2 so this is uh, the correct option d so option d is the correct answer is it uh, clear is it uh, clear if it is uh, clear, uh, Edom, please uh, note this thing down. Please note it down and uh, then we'll talk about the next question. So we have to finish this one quickly and then in the next, uh, uh, and then I'll start this electric charge. So just uh, quickly stop this one. Whenever you have a uh, note, you just uh,
Yeah. Okay, so now let us do the next uh, question, right? And we have uh, done these kind of questions, right? So work done from different means, from uh, uniform force, from parametric force, and from uh, these, uh, and then we have also done these kind of questions, right? So work and moment repetition. So now let us uh, do this uh, question, right? This question we have done, a particle moves from a point this to this. When a force is applied, how much work has been done by the force? This thing we have done. A block of mass uh, 10 kg moving in x direction with a constant speed of 10 meter per second is uh, subjected to a retarding force of uh, 0.1 x joule per meter during its travel from x to this. So then this is what kind of force? Right. So what kind of force is this? Is this a uniform force or uh, what kind of force is this, uh, Hiram? So you see that this is a variable force, right? F is uh, some x. F is a function of x. This is a variable force. Then we have to use the idea of reintegration, right? So we have to find out work done. That is uh, what? And uh, what do we have? We have a uh, variable force. Force is uh, variable. So this thing we have already done that uh, work done is simply f dx and uh, from x1 to x2. That is uh, the work. Right, so let's uh, find out. F is given, this is 0.1x. And then dx, F is uh, given, right? So this is 0.1x. Now, uh, x1 is uh, 20 meter, x2 is 30 meter, right? All the things are given. And uh, what else is uh, given? So a block of uh, 10 kg moving in x direction with a constant speed of 10 meter per second is subjected to a retarding force. Its final kinetic uh, energy, right? Oh, that, uh, okay. So this is the work done, right? Let's find out the work done first. And then uh, we will use uh, the other idea. So what would be this? This is 0 0.1 is a constant, it is taken outside. Then integration of x. Integration of x is x squared by 2. And uh, the limit that we have to put is 30 and uh, 20. So this is 0 0.1 by 2 is uh, taken uh, outside. Then this is uh, 30 squared minus uh, 20 squared. So how much is this? 0 0.1 by 2. 900 minus 400. So this is uh, 0 0.1 and uh, 500 by 2. So this is uh, how much? This is uh, 250. And then uh, 0 0.1, so this is 25 uh, joules. This is the work done. Now we know that, we know that what does this uh, work energy theorem states? Work energy theorem states that uh, total work done, right? Total work done is uh, change in kinetic energy. So if we apply this thing, total work done, we have found, uh, calculated 25 to change in kinetic energy. Moving in x direction with a constant speed of uh, 10 meter per second. So, initially, right, uh, we don't know the final velocity that is half mv squared, but we know the initial velocity, half m, and uh, this is moving with 10 meter per second, right, and squared. So, we can write this as 25, and uh, this is half, mass is 10, and uh, v squared minus uh, half. 10 and uh, 10 squared, right? So that would be So we can uh, cancel this thing, 5. This is also canceled, this is 5. 
and uh, we can take out this pi common. So this pi is common. This is v square minus uh, 100. So this is uh, 5. So how much is uh, this thing? This is 5 and uh, v squared minus uh, 100. So, oh, we have to only find out uh, the final kinetic energy. So we need to solve uh, this part, right? If you don't want to find out uh, the velocity. So only this part would be enough, right? So, yeah, let's... Uh, so this is uh, the final kinetic K final. And uh, yeah, this part is here. So this is uh, 25 and uh, plus 500. So 25 plus 500 is the uh, final kinetic energy. So this is 525. But, uh, oh, there is one important thing that we have missed. So this is a retarding force. Retarding force meaning that uh, this force is a dissipative force. So this thing would be negative, right? This thing is negative. So work done would be negative and we will get uh, this thing as 475, right? Because uh, this is a retarding force, so force would be negative. So then this thing would be negative, and uh, we would have to come. This is the, the answer. Is it uh, clear? If it is clear, then yes, please, sir. Yeah. Then please note it down, and then we'll do the next step. So this, we see that how this uh, work in any theorem is uh, important, right? So that is how this work in any theorem is important. Uh, Yeah, this should be minus all. Because that is a retarding issue. This is all here we have got. Anyway, you have a uh, just Yeah, anybody can have one to just say. So we got disconnected in early. Done, so. Okay, now let us, uh, so we have done this uh, question, right, using the concept of work energy theorem. Let us find out, uh, do we have any other uh, questions? Yes, a stone is, uh, at an angle of 45. So this uses the idea of projectile motion and uh, then work energy theorem as well, right? Uh, good. And then this, uh, these are collisions. So let's, uh, let's do this question. What would we have in this question? A stone is thrown at an angle of 45 degrees to be horizontal with kinetic energy. The uh, kinetic energy at the highest point is uh, 
right? So what path uh, then this the, the slope will uh, follow? What path this slope will follow if it is projected with some uh, angle? What path will uh, it follow? So your voice is very low. My voice is uh, low. Okay, let me let me fix this. Nice. So how is it uh, now? Uh, sir, actually, can you just place your mic a little closer? Yeah, how is it uh, now? Yeah, it's better. Good. So, yeah. Okay, so I was asking that uh, what kind of path this uh, stone will uh, follow if it is uh, projected with the bank. So this is the projectile motion, right? This is projectile motion. So this will follow this uh, parabolic path. So this uh, this is the kind of path it will uh, follow, right? And it is uh, projected with uh, 45 degree angle, right? And uh, its initial speed, let's say that is uh, u. So what do we know about uh, this thing? Of uh, 45 degree with uh, energy k, Let's say that this height is uh, h, or uh, we will not need this uh, height, right? But we know that, uh, let's say this is one point, and uh, this is second point, right? So at this point, at one, kinetic energy is uh, how much? That is simply half m uh, u square. Right. Right. Now we know that this is a projectile motion. So this has two kinds of velocity. One is horizontal, that is u cos uh, theta, and the other one is uh, vertical, that is uh, u sine uh, theta. And at this point, what velocity becomes zero? Can you tell me? What velocity? Yes. So can you repeat that? So I am asking that at this point, what velocity becomes uh, zero? Yes, what velocity becomes zero at this point? U. U, is, uh, U has two components, right? The horizontal one, the vertical one. So at highest point, what velocity becomes zero and uh, what velocity becomes zero? U sine theta? U sine theta. So vertical becomes zero, right? Because it is not going uh, upward ahead. Yes. It, it has stopped uh, going upward. So only the velocity that you have is uh, the horizontal one. And uh, if we remember, or if you remember that uh, this velocity, the horizontal one remains constant uh, always. Right? This velocity remains constant. So this is uh, U cos theta. This is uh, u cos theta. So the final velocity at this point, right? That is uh, vy. Vy is zero and uh, vx, that is simply ux. That is the thing that we do. And uh, what is uh, vx in here? This is uh, u cos theta, which is u cos 45. So what is uh, vx? This is uh, u and one by u. So u by two. This is vx. So kinetic energy at, uh, right, kinetic energy at two point. That would be how much? That would be half m v x square. Right. Kinetic energy at uh, one point had two components, u cos theta, u sine theta. So this was the magnitude. U was the magnitude, so this was half, only half m u square. But if we are talking about this thing, so the magnitude will have two components, but one component is zero. Only this component is a component is there. So this is half m v x square. This is half 
m uh, and uh, we know that vx square is out. That is u by root 2 whole square. So this is uh, half m u square by 2. Right. What is half m u square? So that is kinetic energy at this place. So this is uh, k by 2. Right. So the kinetic energy at the highest point. So k at uh, highest point, let me write it as h. This is k by 2. Is it uh, clear? Is yes. It? Yeah. So if you have any doubt in this question, don't hesitate to ask me. Otherwise, we'll continue. Quickly note this thing down and then we will talk about it. Yeah, whenever you have the noted things here. Done. Yeah. Good. So now let us uh, do another question, right? So these are uh, direct questions, right? So this one we have done. And our object is uh, flying in air with velocity suddenly breaks into pieces whose masses are in the ratio. Okay, this one uh, we need to do. So now we have uh, come to this conservation of uh, momentum and this is uh, collision, right? So let's uh, do all these uh, equations. A ball moving with velocity to the right so now it's stationary to our the mass. Yeah, so coefficient of restitution that we have also talked about. So we have only three questions to get, right? Oh, this one is also there. A force acts on a 3 gram particle in such a way that the position of uh, the particle as function of time is given by this. The work done during the first uh, four is first four seconds. This one we have also done, right? So this one we have done in, yeah, in the conceptual part we have done especially. So this I will leave it, right? Please try this one. This question we have done. This is parametric form, right? We have to find out f, we have to find out velocity, and then we have to integrate uh, from 0 to 4 seconds. This we have uh, done, right? So I will leave this to you and then we'll talk about the uh, So let's uh, do this. So an object uh, uh, flying in air with velocity suddenly breaks into pieces uh, whose masses are in the ratio 1 to 5. The smaller masses flies with uh, velocity. So what is the idea that we have to use in this question? What is the idea that we have to use? Yes. What is the idea that we have to use in this uh, question? You know? We have done this uh, equation, explosion type of equation that we have done. So the idea is conservation of momentum. This is the thing that we have to do. Right. And uh, what do we know? So let's say that uh, the mass of the uh, particle, right? So this is the parent particle. So let's say that uh, parent particle has mass or parent object has mass m, right? 
or let's say that uh, let's say that the ratio is one is to five. So we can assume that uh, the ratio is now the two pieces. So the daughter uh, particle, right? So daughter one. Daughter one. What would be the mass? We will assume that let the ratio let the ratio is x. So smaller mass will have uh, x, and uh, the larger mass will have five x mass. Right. So the total mass is uh, x plus five x, and this is m. So what do we have? This is uh, 6x equals to m. So x is m by 6. So daughter 1 is m by 6. And uh, daughter 2 is uh, 5m by 6. Right. So these are the two masses that we have. The smaller mass flies with of uh, velocity. This, the velocity of the larger piece. Right, so this is what we have. So we know that conservation of moment. This thing we and uh, what does it say? So P initial vector that would be equal to P final vector. So initial, what is uh, the initial momentum? That is M and uh, V, or let's write it as U. This would be equal to M1, V1, plus M2, V2, right? So this is uh, the question. We have this uh, parent particle, then it explodes. It is moving with some velocity. Then it explodes and breaks into two particles, so M1 and uh, M2, right? This is uh, the question. And uh, you have to find out V1 is given, you have to find out what is uh, V2. So M and uh, U. U is uh, 20 I hat plus 25 J hat minus 12 K hat. And then uh, M1 is M by 6. And uh, this is 100 I plus 35 uh, J plus 8 K. And then M2 is 5 M by 6. And uh, we do this we do. Right. So let's solve this thing and uh, find out the answer. So what is uh, this thing? So M, 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 that is everywhere. So this we can cancel. Right. We can take 6 common and uh, put it in here. So 6 into 20i plus 25j minus 12k. And then this is 100i plus 35j plus 8k. And this is 5v2. Right, so what is uh, the, this is 120i. And then uh, we have uh, 150 j and then minus uh, 72 k and then 100 i 35 j 8 k and plus 5 uh, v2 so how much is uh, this thing? this is going to be right hand side so this is 20 i and uh, then we have 150 minus 35 so that is uh, how much 1 1 5 uh, j and then minus 72 and uh, minus 8. So that is 80k and then 5. So V2 would be how much? That would be 5 divided by this. So 4i and uh, plus 23j and then minus uh, 8. Oh. So we don't have uh, 8k, right? This was the uh, 12, right?
yeah, well, and uh, okay. Seventy-two K, and then there is some uh, mistake in the answer, right? This, but this will not be minus eight K, so this will be different. So this is uh, sixty, right? Sixteen K. So this is the correct answer. This is uh, the correct answer, right? So we be six and uh, twelve. And then this goes in the right hand side, so this becomes minus 80. Yeah, so this would be 60. So is it uh, clear? Yes. Yeah, so this would be the answer. Uh, please uh, note it down, and if you have any doubt, please add. Uh, so how should I zoom in? Oh, so yeah, so please uh, note down this thing quickly, and then we'll talk about it. More questions, and then we will move on to the next chapter that is electric charge. Then, That is twenty, right? One twenty, one twenty, seventy two. Five is that you twenty five. Whenever you have a noted just Done. Done. Okay, so now we just uh, do the next question. So the next question is uh, this one. So, uh, body of uh, body A of mass 4F moving with speed U collides with uh, another body of mass 2M at rest. The collision is uh, head on and uh, elastic in nature. After the collision, the fraction of energy lost by colliding uh, the, by the colliding body A is uh, how much? Right. So after the collision, the fraction of energy lost by the collision colliding body is. So how much energy has been lost by A? That is the equation. We know that the total kinetic energy will be conserved. Right. The total kinetic energy will be conserved. But uh, what is the energy lost by this body? So we have to find out. The change in energy, right? 
we have to find out the uh, change in uh, energy and to be precise what kind of energy kinetic energy of uh, body that is uh, the thing that we have to find out. so you have this uh, a object which was moving with u1 and uh, then it collides with this uh, object which is at rest so u2 is zero this is b this one collides this is it on collision then uh, A is moving with uh, V1 velocity, B is uh, moving with, and uh, they are moving in same direction, right? So B is, this is motion in one way, right? B is moving with uh, V2. So what do we know about uh, this thing, right? So what do we know about V1? We have uh, generated or we have formulated one formula for this kind of collision. If this is at rest, so V1 is simply M1 minus M2 divided by M1 plus M2 and uh, U1. Right, this was the formula. And uh, V2 was uh, how much? This was 2. And uh, M1 U1 divided by M1 plus uh, M2. Right, this was, uh, we, you remember this? Yes, so if we go back uh, to the previous uh, lectures, right? So in here, if we go. Right, so we have formulated that uh, V1 is U1, M1 minus M2, M1 plus uh, M2, and uh, V2 is how uh, much? V2, we are we have not V2, uh, but we can find that out. So, yeah, but, uh, but only V1 is uh, needed, right? But uh, if we remember that would be also, V2 is uh, 2M1, U1, and then uh, the answer. So this is uh, V2. Okay. So now uh, we know that this is V1, and this is the velocity of A. So initially, right, before collision, what was the kinetic energy of uh, A? Right, let's say this is uh, initial. This is half m and uh, u1 square. Let's say this is ma and uh, u1 square. So this is uh, half and this is 4m. So 4m and uh, u1 is uh, how much? u1 is uh, moving with speed u. So that is simply u squared. So this thing cancels. And uh, this is simply 2m u squared. This is uh, the initial kinetic energy of A. What is uh, the final kinetic energy after collision? After collision, the kinetic energy A final, that would be half m A and uh, v1 squared. So how much is uh, this thing? So let's find out first what is V1. V1 is uh, 4M minus uh, 2M divided by 4M plus 2M into U1, which is U. So this is uh, 2M divided by how much? That is uh, 6M and uh, U. So this is simply U by 3. This is uh, V1. So if we put that value in here, so how much uh, that means? Half 4m and uh, u square or u by 3 square, so u square by 9. So this is uh, 2. So this is uh, 2m u square by 9. This is the uh, final kinetic energy. Now energy lost would be how much? 
that we know. So energy lost is delta K and this is uh, minus or we can write it as uh, whatever the ener initial energy was, right? So energy lost. Energy loss, whatever the initial energy was, right? Minus the final uh, energy. So this would be half, uh, or this we have already calculated. So this is m u square minus this is two m square by nine. So how much is uh, this? So 2mu square is common, then uh, 1 minus 1 by 9. So this is uh, 8 by 9 and uh, 2mu square. Now we have to find out the fraction. So fraction would be just uh, division with the initial uh, one. So let's say this is delta k. So delta k by k initial. That is uh, the fraction. So 2m u square divided by 8 by 9 and then uh, 2m u square. Right. Oh, so we have to find out uh, delta k by right. So delta k is 8 by 9 uh, 2m u square divided by 2m u square. So this part cancels and this is 8 by 9. This is uh, the fractional energy cost by A, and that is given to uh, B. That is why B has started. So this was uh, this question. Is it uh, clear? So we have just applied the idea of right. Uh, we have just applied the idea of uh, collision, elastic collision. This formula we have to derive. Right, we don't have to derive this thing, this thing we have to. If we remember this thing, then this one. Yes, sir, is it uh, clear? Yes, yeah. sir, clear. Good, good. So please uh, note this thing uh, down. Note it down. Yeah, whenever you have a note it, just uh, remember in this question, we know that this is an elastic collision. And in elastic collision, uh, the kinetic energy is conserved. But uh, we are only talking about energy lost by A, object A. So then we can talk about uh, change in kinetic. Otherwise, the total kinetic energy that would remain constant, right? So change would be zero because the collision is in uh, collision is elastic. Yes, uh, whenever you have uh, just. Done, sir. Yeah. Okay, so then let's do the last question and then this will be.
What do we have in this uh, question? A ball moving with velocity 2 meter per second. Collides head on. So, whenever we have a head on collision with a ball, if the coefficient of distribution is 2.5, then their velocity is uh, after collision to be. Right. So, if the collision is uh, head on, then they will move in uh, one direction. So if it is head-on collision, then they will move in uh, one direction. So then the equation becomes uh, simple, right? We don't have to talk about the angles. So this is motion in one. Right. And uh, this coefficient of restitution, this is uh, given. And uh, this is 0 0.5. Right. What is this coefficient of restitution? So if you remember, yes. Yeah, so this is the measure of uh, elastic, whether the collision is elastic, inelastic, or perfect. So this is given by the change in velocity final, that is uh, V2 minus uh, V1. And then change in uh, initial velocity. So u1 minus uh, And we take uh, the positive of uh, these values, right? So we take uh, the positive. Values. So uh, what is uh, this thing? Right. E is given that is 0 0.5. And uh, v2 minus uh, v1. Let's say this is v2 minus v1. And uh, u1 minus uh, u2. A ball moving with velocity 2 meter per second collides with a uh, stationary ball. So u2 is 0. This part is 0. q1 is uh, how much? That is 2 meter per second. So 2 minus 0. Right. Then this is uh, v2. So 0 0.5 into 2, that is 1. And uh, v2 minus uh, v1. So this is one equation. Right, this is one equation. Now, what is the other thing that uh, we know? So, after collision uh, will be, then their velocity is the collision of uh, this thing. So, their velocity. So, you see that in uh, which case V2 minus V1 is uh, from the option. From the option in which case uh, the change in velocity is uh, 1. In which case the change in velocity is 1? Can you tell me? A, B, C, D. In which option the change in velocity is uh, 1? B. In B, you see that 1 minus 1. That would be 0. So change in velocity is uh, 0. Yes. In B, you see that if you put V1, V2 is 1, V1 is 1, then that would be 3, right? First one. First one. So the option should be first. So this is uh, the option. Right? Is it uh, clear? Yes, sir. So from uh, the definition of coefficient of restitution only, we can find that what should be the correct answer. So this is uh, And if we apply, the conservation of momentum as well, right? So if we apply the conservation of momentum, so we can write that uh, m1 u1, right? This would be equal to m2 or uh, m1 v1 plus m2 v2. So how much is this thing? m1 is a ball with uh, on another stationary ball of double the mass. So let's say this is m u1 is uh, 2, and then this is m, m1 u1, so this is m v1, and then m2 is twice the mass, so 2 m v2. So how much is uh, this thing? So 2 m 
and uh, m v one v one they have not said so this is v one plus uh, this is two uh, m so m m and m cancel and we have uh, two v one plus uh, two v two right. So if we put this value in uh, here, so how we can write this thing? So two v equals to two v two minus or uh, plus uh, v one. So if we add these two things, if we add these two things, what we'll get? This would be three equals to three v two. So v two is uh, one, and uh, v one is uh, zero. So we can find out, but uh, we can also by just checking the options, we can find out uh, this, right? So this is these are the ideas. Uh, give me one moment. I'll uh, yeah, I'll I'll back in a moment. Just uh, note this thing down. Just note it uh, down and stop. Yes, sir. Whenever you have uh, put it, just tell me. Yes, uh, whenever you have it, just uh, so this would be done, right? In this chapter. It's uh, Miram. Okay. Yes, I'm done. Yes. So, but this this is not necessary to do all these calculations, right? From here we also saw, right? But if uh, this was one two, if they have uh, if they had given this uh, option like uh, let's say option let's say E, which was one and two, then you have to do all these calculations. But in this, in these option, we saw already that uh, the difference is not uh, one for these three cases, right? So then we discarded these two options. But if they have given this kind of option as well, so in this one the difference is uh, one. So then we have to draw these cases. So this is uh, all about uh, work energy and power, right? So we have talked about uh, how we calculate the work done. Right, and what is potential energy, what is kinetic energy, what is power, what is all those things, how the kinetic energy is related with momentum, what is conservation of momentum, what is conservation of energy, what is work energy theorem, so all these things we have done, right? And the last part was this calculation. So this is, this is done, now let's start uh, the other chapter, which is electric charges and uh, beams, right?
So what is the first thing that we have studied in uh, the electric charges and waves? So the first thing that we have talked about is the, the Coulomb series, right? We know that uh, what is this quantization of charge? So total charge is N E. This thing we know already. And uh, then after that, we have talked about what is Coulomb's law. So how the force is defined between the charge. And depending upon the polarity of charges, whether it is positive or negative, the force can be attractive or repulsive. In gravitation, you don't have, uh, right, in gravitation, we don't have uh, repulsive charge. In gravitation, you only have uh, attractive force. Not a repulsive charge, but repulsive force. But uh, in gravitation, you only have attractive force. Whenever you have two masses, then those two masses will attract each other, right? They will never repel each other. So that is the idea of uh, Newton's law of gravity. Similarly, we have this uh, Coulomb's law of uh, electric uh, force, right? What does it say? So if you have two charges. Right, if you have uh, two charges and there, then there is a se separation between them. So then uh, the force of uh, repulsi repulsion or attraction would be KQ1 Q2 pi R square. Where this K value is uh, 9 into 10 to the power uh, 9, right? And this is uh, what? Newton. Uh, this is Newton. Meter square per Coulomb square, right? That is uh, this K. And this key is also equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon. So this value we have to uh, write. Why this is important? Because this tells us that uh, the Coulomb force is dependent upon the medium. Right? So this is the permittivity of free space. So in medium, this changes to P. Right. So in medium, this is becomes permittivity of medium. Right. And uh, what happens to the Coulomb force? So Coulomb force becomes Coulomb force increases or decreases? Yes. What happens to the Coulomb force? Yes. It will, yeah, so if you put uh, the charges in the medium, in the dielectric medium, with the Coulomb force uh, increase or decrease? What increase? Will happen? Increase, so it will decrease, right? It will decrease. It will decrease by a factor of K. Right, this is what happens to the Coulomb force, where this K is what? This K is dielectric constant. Right, and this is equal to permittivity of medium divided by permittivity of free space. So this is, this is uh, the force, Coulomb force in the medium, right? So it will decrease because K is always greater than one. And uh, K value is, uh, if you put, right, if you put your charges in the air and if you put your charges in the water, then uh, the force of attraction or repulsion between the charges will decrease in the water, right, because of uh, the dielectric uh, part. And uh, the dielectric constant of the water, how much is this value? Do you remember the dielectric constant of the water? So this is the uh, yes. Sir, no, I don't know. Yeah, okay, it's, it's totally fine. It's all right, right? You have uh, on again, right? Okay, so this is all about Coulomb's law, right? And then if we talk about uh, Coulomb's law in vector form, so this is uh, given by let's say f one two. Force on 1 due to 2, this is simply K, Q1, Q2 divided by R1 minus R2, magnitude Q, and then R1 minus naught. 
So this is uh, the Coulomb's law in vector, right? These things we have to find. Right. And uh, then there's uh, this kind of question that if the charges become double, separation becomes half, then what will happen to the uh, that way, those kind of questions we have uh, already done, so we'll not discuss that. But these are the things that we have to do. These are the important points. What will happen in the medium? What is the dielectric constant of water? Dielectric constant of uh, conductor? That is infinity, right? So, and then we have uh, this, right? Okay, so in the medium, this is. Uh, F A L by K. So these are the questions. Yeah, we have to do one question and uh, and then I will talk about uh, equilibrium and uh, tension, right? Let's let's do one question and then this will be. Okay, so uh, we have this question that uh, to point uh, charges, right? To point charges P and P having charges plus Q and minus Q respective are placed at a certain distance apart and force force between them as F, right? So initially, right, initial case, case first. Case first, we have uh, charge A. Right, this is particle A, and uh, this is particle B. This has charge uh, plus Q, and this has charge minus Q. Right, are placed at a certain distance apart, so the separation between them is uh, R. Right, and force between them is uh, F. So, what is the force? Coulomb force is simply K, Q, this is charge, Q, this charge divided by separation R square. So this is simply K, Q square by R square. Right, this is the initial force. Now what happens? Second case. So case uh, second. Now we are transferring. Uh, so if 25% of charge is transferred from A to B, so then at uh, or for charge particle B, then this would become Q A prime, right? And this will become uh, Q B prime. These are the new charges. So let's uh, find out the uh, charge on A, right? For charge, Because 25% of charge of A is taken out. So then what would be the charge on A? That would be Q minus 25% is taken. 25% of A, right, which is uh, Q. So this would be the charge on uh, A. And that is uh, what I'm calling uh, Q prime. So how much is this uh, Q wave time? This is, uh, and they are saying that uh, the separation is uh, same, right? Separation is uh, same. This has not changed. So then what is uh, this A prime? That is uh, Q minus 25% is 25 by 100. And then this is uh, Q. So Q minus Q by 4, that is uh, 3 Q by 4. So this is the new charge on A. And charge on B, what is this thing? So this is minus Q, uh, whole charge, plus 25% of charge on A. That is uh, Q. So how much is this thing? Minus Q plus 25 by 100 and uh, Q. So that is uh, minus Q plus Q by 
So that is minus three Q by two. That is the charge on uh, right. Then what will be the force? What will be the force? So force will be F, let's say. Q dash A plus Q dash B. Yes, not plus, but uh, multiplication, right? Uh, F prime. That is K, Q A, and uh, Q B. Divided by R square, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So then we know that K and then this is uh, 3 Q by 4. And then uh, 3 Q by 4 divided by R square. So this is uh, 9 by 16. And uh, K Q square by R square. Sir, there was minus also. Yeah, but we are only talking about the magnitude, right? Minus represents that uh, the force would be attracted. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, so whenever we are only talking about the magnitude, then uh, we don't consider this. Unit. So this would be uh, 9 by 16 kq square by r square, that is f. So 9 by 16, so that would be the answer. 9f by 16, right? So this is uh, the equation. Is, is it uh, clear? Yes, sir. Okay, then please uh, note this thing down. Yeah, whenever you have a uh, tip, just uh, tip. Done, sir. Yeah. Okay, so the next uh, type of questions are about. So let me just uh, talk about these things. Eight uh, minutes. So then I will. I can talk about. Right. So uh, this thing you have already learned, but uh, first we have talked about Coulomb's law, and then we have to talk about uh, equilibrium, right? So we have talked about the fourth chapter, laws of motion. Just recently we have talked about the fourth chapter. What was this uh, equilibrium condition? Do you remember? Yeah, this thing we have just uh, done, right? So what was the equilibrium? What was the equilibrium? Okay, so we have forgotten. Uh, all right, so. In the laws of motion, we studied. In the laws of motion, we studied that uh, at equilibrium, right? At equilibrium, all the forces cancel each other, right? So F net is zero at equilibrium, right? So let's say you you have this point. This is at equilibrium, so let's say force one is acting in this direction, force two is acting in this direction. So if it is equilibrium, then uh, this has same magnitude, which is F. This has same magnitude, which is F, but they are in the opposite direction. So F1 equals to F2, right? F1 equals to F2 at uh, equilibrium. So if we calculate F net, F net would be how much? This one is F1 plus F2. This should be zero. 
right at equilibrium. So F1 is how much? F1 is uh, Fj hat and uh, F2 is how much? That is F and minus J hat. This is going downwards. So Fj minus Fj that will be. So that happens F net is zero at equilibrium, right? Similarly, we have uh, equilibrium of charges, right? So equilibrium of charges, there are two points. One is that one point is at equilibrium. One point is at uh, equilibrium. And the second point is that uh, system is at uh, equilibrium. These things we have learned, uh, CPSC 12, CPSC 2, right? So we'll uh, talk about these two. Uh, things uh, extensively, right? So explicitly, we'll talk about these. Right? Right. So first point is that, right? First point is that, first case is that, one point is that. Right. So, one point is that equilibrium means what? That, uh, let's say, uh, let's say, let's understand this uh, thing by a question. So we have two charges, right? And let's say this is uh, plus Q, this is uh, plus 4Q. We have these two charges and we put another charge, right? Uh, we put another charge between these two charges. So let's say that separation between them is L. And we put another charge, let's say uh, Q, at this point, and uh, this point is at equilibrium. We are not focusing on this point, we are not focusing on this point. So this point, this point, let's say this is uh, A, B, and uh, C. So this C is at uh, equilibrium. We are not thinking about these two points, point A and B. So that is one kind of uh, equilibrium, right? And then we have to find out, question is that, find out, find out uh, the position of uh, Q so that it is at uh, equilibrium, right? So we have to find out, let's say from A, from A, this is, let's say X, this distance is X. So how much would be this distance? How much would be this distance? L minus X. L minus six, absolutely good. Good. So this would be L minus six. So we have to find out. The question is that what is this x? If c is at equilibrium, so this is given that uh, it is given that c point c is at uh, equilibrium. Point c is at uh, equilibrium. Right. So what uh, do we mean by this? So f c force at C point, that would be zero, which means that whatever the forces are acting on that point, right, uh, at equilibrium, and we are talking about uh, C, this is the solution, right? Let me use another one. So point C is at uh, equilibrium, F C is uh, zero. So how many forces are acting on that uh, C point? How many forces are acting? How many forces are acting on this C point? Mm, we have just studied the Coulomb force. So one force would be due to this charge A, and then there is another which is B, right? Clear? 
Yes. So there are two forces, right? Two forces, and uh, let's talk about uh, force due to A, right? So if we are talking about this point C, and uh, let me draw it uh, in. So this will become here if I draw it in. So let's say this is E, this is B, and this is E. This is Q, this is plus Q, and this is plus root. So due to this charge, plus Q charge, the force would be attractive or repulsive at this point. What kind of force would be that? Attractive or repulsive at this point? Repulsive. Repulsive. So the force would be right hand side or left hand side? What would be the direction? Yes. What left would be hand side. Left would be attractive, right? With oh, sorry. For so plus Q, it would be right. Yeah. Right. So this would be F and I will write it as Q. Similarly, due to this plus 4Q, the force would be again repulsive. So in this touch, this is plus 2. Clear? And this point is at equilibrium, which means that these forces are balancing each other. So they are equal. So FQ, this is equal to F root, right? So how much is FQ? That is K, Q, Q divided by the separation between them, which is X square. And uh, then we have F4Q, that is Q and uh, 4Q, and then Q divided by L minus X square. So K cancels, Q cancels, uh, this Q cancels, we have uh, 1 by x square, that is 4 by L minus x uh, whole square. So if we write uh, this thing uh, down, right? So if we take this thing 4x square, and then this is, let me write it in this way. So this is uh, L minus x whole square, and then this is 4x square. So if we take, take, square root, then uh, what would be this? So this is uh, L minus X, this is uh, plus minus 2X. So first we will take, let's say we'll take uh, plus 2X. So L minus 2X is, uh, so L minus X case first is uh, plus 2X, and uh, L minus X is uh, minus 2X. So if we solve this thing, so we'll have uh, L is uh, 3X. So X is L by 3. And if we take this distance, so L would be minus X minus 2X. So plus 2X, this would be minus X. So X is minus L, which is uh, not the correct case. So this would be the R. So the separation should be X equals to L by 3. We have to place the charge in here that, so that this point is at equal. Right. I was about to sneeze, but uh, I don't know what happened. Okay, so is this point uh, here? Is this point? Yes, here? So this is about uh, equilibrium at one point. Uh, yeah, just quickly note down this thing and uh, we will talk about, so we'll stop here and in the next class we'll continue, right? That's okay. Good. I'll note it. Oh, you have already noted? No, I'll note it now.